Yo, what's going on guys, it's Soul Striker. welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to show you guys how to create a Minecraft server for yourself, and I'm not really going to show you how to port forward. Port forward is a little bit different and it allows uh, other people to join your home hosted server. I'm not going to show that to you guys, this is just going to be the basics of creating a private Minecraft server for yourself. So, let's get right into it. So I am on this website called getbucket.org and this just allows you to download the very latest versions of uh, your spigot or craft bucket or vanilla server and basically all you want to do is come to this uh, website, uh, link will be down in the description and I'm going to be using a 1.12 for this tutorial, go ahead and click it download and it will just take you to Adfly and it will start downloading in the very bottom. So if you guys don't know the difference between vanilla and spigot, basically spigot and craft bucket allows you to install plugins which everyone loves and there are specific forks of spigot such as bungee cord as well as like paper spigot and a whole bunch of different other ones uh, and basically you can install plugins on all of them vanilla is just straight uh, like pure minecraft that's it so I'm gonna wait for this to finish downloading and then we'll get right into it alright so after you have downloaded your spigot 1.12 jar I'm just gonna drag it to my desktop because you want a place where you can easily access and remember so Basically, all you want to do, go ahead and right click on your desktop or wherever and you want to make a new folder. Uh, you don't have to make a new folder, but this just makes everything all in one spot. Then you go just to name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it YT server. Go ahead and hit enter. Open that, drag your spigot into there. And then after you do that, go ahead and right click in your folder, go to new. And then you want to make a new text document. Alright, once your text document is open, uh, there will be uh, some code in the description, some job code, and I'm just going to paste it in. So this is basically what it looks like. I'll explain to you what it does. So here's your Java. This is your minimum rim, and then here's your maximum rim. So we have 1G, which is 1 gig, and then 2G, that's your maximum gig. So we got 1G for our minimum and 2 gigs for our maximum. And then you have a dash jar that is just signifies, hey, we're going to be running a jar. Dar, jar file and then over here is your name of your jar file so spigot.jar so one thing I want to make sure is as you see in our server we have a spigot-1.12 jar and for order for your server to recognize what specific jar it is you have to have the exact name so either you can rename your jar to spigot or you can rename it to server, you just rename it to whatever, I'm going to rename it to server. That means in our text document that we're going to be running our server from, you have to have the exact same name. So as you see we have server, now we have to put this exact name, so server.jar. So if you had spigot.jar in your Java, and over here you had spigot.1.12, you need to rename it to be exactly the same as your java code and then all you want to do is go ahead file save as and then i'm going to all types of files and then we'll need to type in a run dot bat and that just gives you a batch file that you can run the server go ahead and save that then go over here make sure it's in the same folder as your server or it won't recognize that the server is in a different location and it will give you an error for example right now so say we drag our server jar in on our desktop, as you see it's not in this folder. If we try to run our server, as you see, unable to access jar file server.jar. So that means that it's in the wrong place. So go ahead and drag it in, and we should be able to successfully run it up now. So now it is waiting for the libraries, as you see. We now have loaded our server successfully, and we need to accept the EULA in order for it to start. Go ahead and open that. After you change that to go ahead and click save, exit out of that, and we can do that. Make sure when you're doing this code, this pause just pauses the server. When you're stopping it, it just pauses the code altogether. So then you can exit out of your like CMD. After you have accepted your EULA, go ahead and click run. And we're just waiting for the server to start. So as you see, our server is successfully loaded. It's run running the spigot.jar, preparing the spawn and it looks all good and we'll just wait for it to finish loading. 
So as you see, everything has loaded and over here in our file, we have everything with the spigot jar. So we have our server.properties, we can modify, we, we can go into our world, this is our world that has loaded our plugins. We don't have any plugins right now, but we can get some plugins later. And here is your logs folder and your latest log. You can go ahead and open it. As you see, no errors and it's preparing spawn and it's fantastic. So. That is how you create your own server. I definitely recommend if you want to test plugins on your like a private server, you can start building on your own private server. You also have like World Edit, Voxel Sniper, everything that you want uh, to test out. So that is how you make a Spigot server, a very latest version. So hope you guys did enjoy. And you can do this for any server uh, at all. So you can use it for Paper Spigot, uh, Bungie Cord. You just have to rename your .jar to whatever code that you put in to your run at dot bat file so that's how you do everything hope you guys did enjoy leave a like down below and let me know if you have any questions i'll see you guys next time peace